hopefully causing fusion reactions. What are those tiny little sparks that are going on? Oh, we shouldn't be having Hello, hello, hello. It is Monday. I need to do a little bit of PhD work, quite a bit of PhD work. I need to prepare for my Astrofest talk, and I'm also filming a thing. I'm also filming a thing with my dear friend Nico, who is literally a nuclear physicist studying fusion. So this video will be, you know, chatting with Nico and see what he did for his thesis project. So this is Nico. Nico, introduce hey guys. yourself. Yes, I'm Nico. I'm someone who just finished his honours at Sydney University doing plasma physics, especially nuclear fusion, which is what this little device over here is. This may not look too fancy, and that's the whole point. We're trying to make nuclear fusion happen as cheaply and as dodgily as possible. Possible, Because we're all about kind of cheating nature into working for us. So that's what we're doing here. So, Nico, what's fusion? Oh, man. Okay. So what you guys might all know is fission, which is almost the opposite, right? That's what they do like in The Simpsons, those nuclear reactors. They get really heavy elements and break them apart. And you get energy out, but also a lot of horrible radioactive waste. What we try and do is the opposite. And we try and create small little suns inside here. So you get really light elements. If you move them fast enough by making them hot enough, they collide together and form a new particle, right? A heavier one. So we turn hydrogen into helium, effectively. Um, it takes really high temperatures, um, but also what happens is you might know about E equals mc squared, the most famous equation that we get in physics. And the point is that the combined mass of the formed particle is less than the sum of when they were apart. So what we're doing is we're turning mass directly into energy here. And of course you get a lot out. Sick. Yeah, that's what we try and do. It, uh, here we're not going for like ultimate fusion rates, so some places in the world are trying to make the best fusion possible for electricity. But we're trying to study fusion. So I've got a little system here that's not super effective, but it does work for us to understand how fusion works inside here and how we can control it. So my particular thesis was figuring out how the cathode geometry in a system like this, so kind of like the shape of the interior of the, of the fusion core, how that affects fusion rate. And we found that you can change the fusion rate by like up to 10 or 20 times pretty naively by just trying out random different shapes. So it's a pretty cool effect that we found. So Nico, what's a cathode? Yeah, fair enough. Okay. So the way we get fusion happening in here is rather than just trying to heat it up like indirectly, which is hard, we get a really positive plate and a really negative plate. And the cathode is a negative plate. We charge it up negative electrically, right? So then ions and stuff are drawn towards it really fast, they accelerated really hard and they get really hot that way and hopefully they fuse together when they collide. So the cathode is the point they're all dragged towards and we found that if you use like a spherical cathode, I can even show you, if we use a spherical cathode rather than a plate cathode, I better turn the light on, it's nice and creepy like you want your science place to be. So it's going to be a dungeon or a lab. Okay, here we go. So we started turning and taking rid of plate cathodes, which you can see over here. I shouldn't touch these with my hands, but we don't have the time for that. So it's just a regular piece of metal. And if you turn that into, say, a hollow sphere, like this, so it's got holes in it and it's a piece of metal as well, this is about 20 times more efficient than the plate, even without putting any more energy in. And that seems like a pretty simple hack. So instead of having to heat it to 200 million degrees Celsius, you can now heat it just to 1 million degrees Celsius. <laughs> a nice, relaxing 1 million degrees. So what we could do is actually set up some fusion if you want it. So I'm going to turn this all on. But yeah, so this biconical cathode is going to create a uh, beam of plasma. So plasma is when you have partially ionized gas. When we put in really high voltages, like we do, I put in 20 <laughs> kilovolts. Voltures. Voltages, sorry. We put in really high voltages, like I do, and we use about 20 kilovolts here. It ionizes some of the particles in the gas, right, that you have inside your chamber. And that's when you start accelerating them and getting the fusion occurring. We also get a plasma, which gives off light. And hydrogen plasma gives off purple light, which we'll see. And we'll see a beam of plasma coming out of the, the um, cathode, of the hollow cathode center we have in the middle. And that's actually why these are so much better at fusion. They condense the plasma into a small area. We get a lot of fusion collisions. Okay, so I'm gonna turn on the turbo pump. We've gotta get to really low pressures first in these systems. Yeah, so this thing, you can actually hear it winding up. It takes a little bit of time. 
We want to get it to really low pressures, so we take out all the normal air and we put in deuterium gas or hydrogen gas. Deuterium is just a version of hydrogen, it's a bit easier to fuse. Mm -hmm. Then you know it's only that in there. So when you're having fusion, you can tell exactly what's going on because we only have hydrogen atoms or deuterium atoms. So I'm going to go set that up. So you usually want to have the most secure system possible. So I've got no pressure, very low pressure first while I turn on all my electronics. This is the electron gun. And this is the volt, this is like me applying voltage to the cathode. This is what makes the fusion occur. This is the energy input. And it's all about having a really energy efficient system. So yeah, this is going again going to be, let's say, let's make it high power. Good. I'll put on the filament. Now when we actually do this, we might turn the lights off. That's on. So I'm putting in and when it gets to enough. Oh! Sick! That's fusion. You can see it flashing because I don't have a stable fusion thing going on. But I have a mini star in there. Hopefully causing fusion reactions. What are those tiny little sparks that are going on? Oh, it shouldn't be happening. So that means I haven't designed the system so well this time. And there's enough current that it's actually just causing sparks to occur between the, the center and the outside. So that's why it's not stable. This sparks are ruining the stability of the whole system. This whole setup is a good indication of what scientific experiment really experimentation takes. It's not just about like doing the cool part and recording data. Getting this machine to work took me ages because there's little things. If there's a tiny leak somewhere, it takes you ages to find where it is because it's such a small leak, but it ruins all of your experiments. If actually, if it's sparking like that because I didn't set it up perfectly, that also ruins my experiments. So with my particular experiment, I was testing what changes with the different cathodes that I showed you, the different shapes, how the geometry matters, right? And so the whole point of the experiment was removing every other possible variable that could exist. The problem is with plasma physics, we don't even know what all the variables are. It's so complicated at this point in time, we can only guess and approximate. So I tried to have experiments as constant as possible. I managed to get to a point where I could discover that geometry did definitely matter. It was significant above all the variation and error in all the other parameters that I didn't know about. So, in one way, we can improve fusion energy efficiency just by using the cathode geometry. We don't need to put in any more power, we can just use better and better shapes. We haven't found the best shape yet, that's still to be discovered. But that's something we can look for using the model that I developed from this experiment. So, that's basically what I tried to do with my thesis, and let's see how the markers like it. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks, man. No problems. Thanks for coming to my lab. It's a very lonely, dark place, but a lot of good science has happened in here. So hopefully all of you agreed that Nico is absolutely awesome and this was a really fun video to make. So thank you so much, Nico. Did you like it? Like, should I keep making videos like this? Should I talk to more honor students and ask what they did for their projects and their PhD students and see what they are doing for their projects? Is that something that you're interested in? Please let me know in the comments. Peace. Thanks.